Hey, Alex. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. It's good to see you, man. Yeah, same here. Right on. Yeah, and I think we'll uh, we'll be spending some time uh, like in the next hour or two to today as well with the uh, CNS Day content yep. planning. So you, you thought, uh, I hope you missed me, Alex, because it looks like you're going to get a lot of me now. Ah, uh, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> Do our best. <laughs> How's that, How's everything going for you, Alex? Oh no, all good. All, all good. good. Super right busy, but all good. Are you getting ramped up for Amsterdam? Yeah. It's uh, Cubecons are always super busy. There's uh, always a lot of, uh, let's say, motivation that comes along uh, in time for Cubecon. Just <laughs> <laughs> <It's the> chest. <laughs> <laughs> Get a whole lot done right around the. Two months before KubeCon, let's say. I I know it's like, and then you have like projects, like in project review requests, uh, six weeks before, you know. And... Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, wonder what's driving that. Are the meeting notes linked from uh, the repo? Or you just you just put it in the chat, Alex? Yeah, I, so I put cool. the, the meeting agenda there. Um, morning, afternoon, evening, depending on the time zone, everyone. <laughs> um, so I just posted the um, I just posted the agenda in the um, in a chat window. Um, we have a fairly uh, long set of agenda items to um, to cover today. So um, I think we won't hang around and we can get right through it. So um, so the first uh, the first thing on the agenda is um, is the Rook project. So the Rook project um, uh, was introduced uh, as a CNCF project. Um, probably 18 months ago now, 24 months ago. Yeah, January 18. Yeah, and um, and uh, it started off as Sandbox progressed to incubation, um, and now the Rook project are looking to, um, to uh, upgrade to uh, a graduated project. Um, uh, so I've invited Jared and there, I see there's Travis here on the call as well um, from the Rook team to kind of give us an update on the status and what we are going to uh, expect from the from the due diligence process that we need to just uh, cover off from the SIG uh, to, to get the project over the line. Cool. All right, Alex. Thank you very much. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen so I can just walk through a couple things real quick, if you don't mind. So, so just to put things into perspective, I don't think we're yet at the stage where you have a formal presentation or a or um, or a formal PR yet, right? So this is this yep. is um, the pre work. Yes, exactly. And uh, my first is. Uh, can you see the slide deck here now? We can. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and actually the first slide here, Alex, is about what the expectations are for today. So, um, you know, we went through the process for, uh, for going from sandbox to incubation, um, you know, last year, or over a year ago. And, you know, we did the, the whole formal presentation to the TOC and, you know, writing up all the due diligence and a pull request to the TOC repo, um, you know, all the criteria steps, like we went through that whole thing. And we're, uh, we're in the middle of that right now for graduation, the graduation criteria. So after talking to our you know, CNCF uh, liaisons, uh, Amy and uh, Chris Anacek, uh, you know, one of the things that we learned is necessary as a step this time for graduation is to talk to the SIG and get the review and diligence done by the SIG here. So we uh, wanted to just go ahead and get the conversation started today. We are not ready for a full proposal, but we want to go ahead and figure out where do we have gaps, where are some obstacles and things that we should be concerned about, and um, you know, what are the next steps that we need to, need to work through. 
so the goal, the hopeful goal here is that we would be able to finish the graduation process and all the diligence and have a vote by the TOC before KubeCon in Amsterdam, which is at the very end of March. So that's the hopeful time frame we have here. Okay. And uh, yep, so the so a quick introduction about Rook. Um, there we'll go through this quickly here is that uh, the whole Rook project here uh, was started about three years ago, and it is a cloud native storage orchestrator. So what that means is that it has a lot of automation in uh, through custom controllers and CRDs uh, within Kubernetes that automates a whole bunch of storage management and deployment uh, operational tasks. And it started off as being a operator specifically for Ceph, uh, distributed storage system. And we, around the time of uh, getting transitioning from sandbox to incubation, uh, we went ahead and started an effort on a framework to allow other storage providers and solutions to uh, be part of the Rook project and to, you know, get the benefits of, um, you know, orchestration and automatic management in Kubernetes environments. So yeah, as Alex was saying, we uh, got accepted into the sandbox stage in January of 2018, where it was the first storage project uh, to be accepted into the CNCF. And at that time, our sponsor was uh, Ben Heinemann. And then we went to the incubation stage in September of 2018. And so for this next stage to graduation, uh, we have a proposal. Um, we're going to be talking to Saad more about that uh, for to Saad to, and his new, one of his first tasks as being a new TOC member uh, is to hopefully sponsor the Rook project. So, so hopefully and conveniently, Saad's on the call. Yes, he is. I saw uh, yeah, that. Thanks. And uh, I've uh, got a meeting scheduled with Jared later today. Yep. So awesome. we'll be chatting and thanks for all your effort and support over the years, Saad, for sure. So uh, let's go ahead and call out real quick some of the things we know are to do's right now, things we have not done. Uh, so, you know, submitting the diligence uh, pull request and official proposal to the TOC repo, uh, that is going to be all written up and submitted formally. Uh, we have a list of production users and adopters of the project and we need to finalize that and uh, flesh that out a little bit more. Uh, we have a couple of governance updates uh, that Travis will be walking through in a second. And uh, we are updating or implementing our security disclosure process. Uh, so we have a pull request that's almost done with that. So that should be done soon. And we also know that we need to do our, uh, the core infrastructure initiative uh, best practice badge or like 80% through that. And so we need to finish that off as well. So those are the things we know we have not done, uh, the, uh, the gaps we're aware of. And just a quick walkthrough before I hand it over to- Sorry, the, just, just, a, just a quick one. Um, mm -hmm. what, what, the the security um, the security audit that that's being completed, but you just need to cover off the results and stuff. Uh, yes, yeah, so the security audit is completely done, and uh, we did that with the tra uh, trail of bits. Uh, they also did one of the upstream Kubernetes security audits. So that's fully completed. All of the um, issues were identified in the. I think they found one critical issue that has been since fixed and patched and released. And the uh, full write-up of that is uh, is published and available. I don't. I think we need, we should link it from the repo so it's more available in public. But that's that's done. This here is just the security disclosure process of if someone in the wild finds the security bug, you know how do they responsibly disclose it and what is our process around that. Um, Got it. So the audit is done, but then the process for finding new security bugs and disclosing them is the thing that's not done yet. Perfect. Yep, and then real quick, so some numbers on a slide here. So uh, the, on the left is what our stats were for the project in the community at the incubation acceptance stage. And then on the right is where we are current day. So, uh, you know, container downloads is another 10x from sandbox to um, incubation was 10x from like 1 million to 10 million and then now 10 million to 100 million. So the project continues to grow in popularity with GitHub Stars. We have a lot more releases. We're you know doing a lot more agile release uh, process there to get more fixes out. Contributed a lot of most most everything is at least two two x to three x growth since uh, the incubation phase. So um, the, the you know the community still expresses interest, and uh, you know the, we're gaining more adopters, and the project continues to grow pretty healthily with both contributors, uh, commits, and uh, usage as well. So I'll hand it off to Travis to talk about some of the uh, actual accomplishment and work. Yep, the real work we're getting down here. Um, <laughs> so since since incubation, yeah, we've definitely had a lot of lot going on in the project. We have basically a quarterly cadence as far as getting releases out. So 
from B0.9 up to 1.2 is our latest release in December. Um, you know, some of the major uh, things going in, like EdgeFS, Cassandra NFS operators are all new uh, back in the 0.9 release, uh, Yugabyte DB in 1.1. Um, so up to six, six storage providers uh, now in, in Rook. Uh, there, now there are a couple others in early phases of, um, well, a PR open right now for Apache uh, Ozone, which um, is a possibility. But anyway, storage providers um, and making it available for, for others is, yeah, has, has been a journey. Uh, two of those, Ceph and EdgeFS, have been declared stable uh, as far as the, you know, the CRDs um, and supportability. Uh, like Jared said, we've completed the security audit. Um, you know, we don't really have time to dive into all the features of, of all the operators, but uh, maybe one to mention is CSI drivers for both Ceph and EdgeFS uh, have been implemented and uh, consider those stable. And yeah, and lots of other features. But we really will miss the, the uh, flex volume driver. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, it'll be around for a while, but um, CSI is definitely the feature. Uh, and then, yeah, we've been collecting our production adopters. Uh, a lot of them, uh, probably, I think, Jared, you said 60% of the people we surveyed don't want to uh, publicize what company they're from. So there are a lot more than this list, but here are, here are some of them that said we could publish their names. Um, so we are following up with them on um, to get quotes and, and things for how they're using Rook and how big their clusters are and things. Uh, also, I guess missed in this list, there are you know, products based on Rook and production we haven't collected uh, those stats either. Um, I know, well, from at least Red Hat and SUSE and maybe others are building on it. And so that's another avenue. Um, but we didn't, um, didn't query those users, just the upstream people. And I think that's about it. Um, yeah. What did I miss, Jared? Yeah, no, I think that's really what we wanted to share today here. And, you know, we know there's a busy agenda today, uh, so we don't want to take up too much time. But, you know, if there's any uh, obvious feedback or, uh, you know, we could follow up in other channels like on the mailing list or you can email us directly and we could talk about, you know, what are the things we really need to focus on and worry about such that, you know, we'll, we'll have good chances of uh, proceeding with our next steps for the graduation. Jared, I think this is perfect. This is kind of like the textbook process that you've followed through Sandbox and incubation graduation. I, I don't personally see any uh, major stumbling blocks. Um, what I can say is that, you know, just the nature of the TOC's busyness before KubeCon, um, you, should, you should try and get those last checkbox items wrapped up in the next week or so, um, because Practically, it, it takes you know a couple of weeks before there's a TOC meeting, and then they vote, and people are out of office. So it it can take up to a month just to you know get that process uh, completed. So it sounds like you've got most of the checkboxes checked, and it sounds like you really know what what's going on here. Uh, but just yeah, leave enough time for for the bureaucracy to uh, take shape. Yeah, that sounds great, Quentin. Thank you very much for that uh, advice there. Brilliant. Okay. Um, so I think the follow-up item then will be to, um, if you if you follow if you finish off those checkpoint uh, those checkbox items um, and the security audit etc. and finish off the presentation, then maybe at the next um, SIG meeting we can do the, the formal presentation and have that recording, um, and then we can we can put together the the, the docs for the um, uh, for the sorry, the Alex, your your voice is fading in and out. I don't know if you can. Oh, hear sorry. Me. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, much better. Thanks. Okay, sorry. So, so I, I was just saying. Um, so the next steps is if if we finish up those checkboxes and then have a proper formal presentation um, in the next uh, SIG meeting, 
then we can have that recording plus um, uh, the, due diligence, the due diligence doc um, and our recommendation for the TOC votes in, in for the next, uh, for the early, early March, I guess that would make it. Yeah, that sounds great, Alex, and uh, we'll follow up on all that. And uh, yeah, we'd love to be on the agenda to do the, um, you know, proper presentation proposal next, uh, next SIG meeting. Awesome. Sounds great. All right. Thank you. So we'll, we'll put you on there. Should we uh, assign somebody from the SIG to do the uh, kind of formal review? Um, yes, we are going to need to allocate someone. I'm guessing that's not going to be you now, right? Because you're on the right, TSV. Right, that would be conflict of interest. Yep. Um, yeah. I'll just okay. be clear. I, I don't think there is a conflict of interest there. I think you can represent the TSC and the uh, storage sector. Uh, and, and by the way, congratulations, Sam. Um, uh, so I, I wouldn't personally worry too much about that unless there's you know some major concerns. That th this seems like a, a you know very straightforward uh, graduation process to me. Uh, just to be clear, the, the majority of the, of the um, due diligence happens in uh, the migration to immigrate uh, to, to um, uh, what is the word I've just lost? Incubation. Uh, incubation. I incubation, that's the one. Um, so unless there have been, you know, major regression since then, uh, it's, it's mostly, you know, getting this badge, uh, getting the security audit done, uh, making sure that you have enough contributors and enough maintainers from different companies, etc. Uh, most of which it seems you've done. You're just getting the final, you know, reports together. So uh, we can get somebody else to do the, um, the due diligence, but the due diligence is essentially making sure that all those things have actually been done. Sounds like they have, so there's not much to do. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I just don't want there to be any question or uh, my double involvement potentially derailing this. So I think it would be safer just to have someone else do it. Yeah, we can do that. Um, uh, before we, uh, one last item, just before we move on from Rook, uh, are there any particular reservations that anyone on the call has uh, that we haven't uh, done the due process here? Uh, seems to me like we have. Okay, thanks. I think we're good. Okay. Um, so I added in, um, so just moving on to the next uh, item on the agenda. So um, the Harbor project, um, at the last meeting, um, we put in links for um, the different PRs and the DD docs, um, and Saad was um, allocated to do an overview with them with the project. Has that gone ahead? I have not gotten a chance to follow up on that. That's still a to do for me. Okay. So this is this is Michael from the Harbor team. Uh, I mean, the um, what we've done with Sig Runtime, and I put a link there. Is a, they you know they're also as busy as everybody else. And they've asked me to create a PR um, that basically uh, kind of drives some of the due diligence that the SIG was supposed to do. And that, that PR essentially is just one file that kind of puts all the checks and balances that the SIG is supposed to do. And they were going to just go through it really quickly and verify it. They, uh, that we've done what we're supposed to and answering those 10 questions. Um, uh, so I do really appreciate it. If, if you have some time to look at it, we're really trying to at least get a decision from the TOC if we're going to graduate before Cubicon. And we've been on hold now for like almost four months. So it'd be good if we can actually get the process moving a little bit. Yeah, I'll try to find some time uh, in the next couple of weeks. Thank I'll you. I'll reach out to you on Slack. Thanks. Do you, do you want me to create a similar document like what I did for SIG Runtime where all you have to do is, if you're good with it, you just merge the PR? Yeah, that would work. Okay, I can do this. I'll, I'll do this and, and, and ping you. Uh, Perfect. And just uh, uh, shoot me an email. Uh, my email's on GitHub. That'll be my way to track this. Um, you prefer email over or the Slack? Uh, do email. 
the email. Um, okay, I'll, I'll try to find your email. All right, thanks, Michael. Awesome. Um, okay, so then just an update to the team. Um, we we completed the review of um, the Dragonfly project. Um, we've uh, we submitted. Um, Lex, you're fading away again. Oh no! Can you hear me now? A little right. bit better. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so we completed the review for the Dragonfly project. Um, we submitted um, a couple of uh, a couple of queries to the team. Um, they've provided the replies this week, which is uh, which is great. Um, and I think um, going through the replies, the the this covers off um, the queries I had anyway. So I am going to um, um, I'm going to give this a, a thumbs up and um, put a, a an addendum in the in the DD that we covered this off. Um, and we can we can uh, we can have that uh, closed off from from a sig review point of view. Um, then moving on, this week we had no late last week. Sorry, we had um, we had a sig chairs and uh, TOC meeting um, where we covered off the process and template for SIG project reviews. Um, the good news is that this is now being agreed. Um, we, have, um, we have the process which, um, which Liz had been driving, um, which is covered in the slide deck and she has created um, a PR um, to, to, to update the existing criteria and process on the TOC GitHub. Um, Aaron's uh, templates, which we, uh, which is basically a merge of um, templates we already had in the SIG storage, together with the template in SIG apps, um, has been um, has been uh, combined, um, and we put it into the into the into the uh, issue three four four, which which is linked there, um, and that template was agreed on too. Um, so this needs to be finally converted to uh, the issue just needs to be converted to a PR um, so it can get uh, so it can get approved but um, I think we're we now have um, a proper easy to follow process um, and a set of templates that we can use for um, sandbox incubation projects um, so I think this is this is a, a, a really good milestone between the TOC and the SIG and thank you everyone for for the work involved to get us to this point. Um, okay, next point. Um, so we have um, we have two sets of edits which we're looking to merge into the um, into the landscape document. So so the first being the database um, update stock. Um, which uh, Suku had written, I've made some changes and asked for a review. Um, Suku and Quinton have put in their comments, which all look great to me. So I'm just going to add that into the document. Um, it would be great if anybody else who has uh, comments would up would uh, have a quick look at that database update document, which has now been outstanding for a little while. But we we would we would love to close this off. Um, so. Um, assuming there aren't any more um, updates by the end of this week, I'll look to merge this into the into the uh, into our landscape white paper. Um, similarly, uh, Jing had um, uh, had an action to update the orchestration and management interfaces section to kind of you know reflect the the current uh, state of the market. Um, given that um, uh, you know, given that uh, over the last uh, eighteen months since we published the white paper, um, there have been sort of a number of uh, changes around CSI and things like that. So, so there is um, there's a link to the updated doc that she has refreshed um, in in the link attached on the agenda as well, um, and she 
she has and Xing has also sent it out as an email. It would be really great if um, um, if people could review that. It it looks good to me. Um, and again, um, assuming there are no um, major review points this week, I'll, I'll look to merge that into the landscape document. And what this will give us will then be um, a landscape document which is um, sort of refreshed for for. 2020 with the with the database updates and will become sort of our our 2.0 um, uh, white paper which which we will then look to to publish and publicize and market etc um, in the run-up to in the run-up to kubecon any comments or questions on that So that uh, this is so good. That optional section, we are going to uh, uh, use that content for the use case document, right? That that's correct. So so we're going to move we're going to move that optional content into into the use cases, and I'll 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 cover that in in, in a little bit. Sounds good. Yeah, I think I was the person complaining about that previously, but now that Alex's table is in there, I'm I'm very happy to move the optional stuff uh, to the other doc. Awesome. All right, so we'll so so it sounds it sounds like we have um, we have agreement there. Um, Jing, did you want to add anything um, around the the management and orchestration updates that that you uh, that you shared out? Uh, no, just uh, uh, if if uh, someone could uh, review it and uh, uh, comment, that would be great. Great. Okay, um, and then we have the um, the performance and benchmarking paper. So um, the the author team met uh, last week, and we no the week before last now, um, and um, agreed on some of the work that we needed to do, and started um, with the updates. Um, we've uh, Paul Sobey, um, uh, who uh, has joined has joined the the sort of the, the white paper team, um, and he's uh, contributed um, uh, a large chunk of uh, content around the, the the common pitfalls and considerations. So so that we've kind of got four or five pages there of of new content, which is which is progress, um, and the rest of the team are working on. Um, uh, some of the other benchmark tool uh, documentation. Um, also, um, I'm following up with Josh um, uh, after the TOC call. He, he mentioned that there were um, some other tools uh, that that we may that we may look to consider um, that he had been um, working with as part of the Kubernetes benchmark and performance SIG. Um, and we'll we'll probably look to see if there is some commonality or some overlap that we can that we can include in here too. Um, so so again, looking for um, some feedback or you know points you know we, we're all specifically we're kind of interested in are we missing anything obvious or if there are overlaps that that you are aware of with um, other documents or other initiatives it would be kind of good to point them out so that we can put the appropriate. Um, references in there, um, um, but otherwise we continue to um, we continue to work on the doc with with a name of of having um, a draft available uh, to share um, before KubeCon. Any questions on that document? I just had a quick look at it. it looks fantastic, Alex. I think this is going to be a huge benefit to the community in general. Um, I, I can take a look at it in the next week or so and give you some comments, but superficially it looks very well headed in the right direction. Brilliant, thank you. Um, all right, so any other any other things on that or can we move on? Well, we're going through we're going through this agenda pretty quick. Um, so the use case doc documents. Um, so, so just to recap on this, the use case documents is um, 
uh, is something that is uh, is something we wanted to work on and has also been the subject of, of sort of end user feedback. So following on from from the content we provided in the in the landscape white paper, um, we agreed to put some use case information together to kind of show um, some of the best practice considerations for 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 specific sets of use cases. And we've had um, We've had a, a, a lot of deliberations. Um, Luis um, uh, had put together um, a template, which which we had discussed quite a bit. Um, and following some of the feedback, we um, we kind of sort of regrouped and and tried to figure out a way forward. So so uh, Luis, Aaron, and myself met last week, um, and we. Um, we 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 agreed uh, a couple of steps to to move forward. So, so first off, um, we're going to move the current um, the current template, which is in GitHub, to to a Google Doc um, to make it a little easier to to collaborate. We're going to um, we're going to change the focus of the template so that rather than being specific product use cases, um, they will be um, focused on uh, use case categories um, rather than the rather than the specific product, and 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 this is to um, sort of address concerns of um, um, you know creating unfair bias or, or or showing preference to to any particular project or 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 vendor or whatever else. Um, so specifically, we 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 had we had a bit of a think and. Again, this is kind of open to to debate, but we we, we kind of thought, okay, um, which which uh, categories do we want to have um, templates drawn up for? And we we put together databases, message queues, um, instrumentation, so to to cover things like you know, say Prometheus or Thanos use cases, um, key value stores and object stores. Um, the template that we have currently is is pretty good, but we're going to add in um, we're going to add in a table that will cover um, the storage attributes from the storage um, landscape document. So the availability, uh, consistency, durability, performance, scalability, etc. Um, and um, and we will also add in um, we will also add in a sample of the options, um, similar to 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 the content that um, that Sugar had put together in the database document. So, so the options section from the database document, and that will form the basis of the new template. So, I'd really love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, are we heading in the direct in the, in the right direction? Um, are there any? You know, serious objections to this idea. Um, if not, um, I'll I'll uh, pull together to Google Doc um, uh, and send it out for um, for uh, for review in terms of a template. Um, and then hopefully, maybe we can, assuming we can get agreement on templates, we can move forward with that template and and create you know the first uh, the first category um, and and sort of. Just make sure that the template works. Thoughts, comments, violent objections. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I totally agree, Alex. I, I think that's pretty much the feedback I gave you guys a while back. So I'm, I'm totally supportive of what you just proposed. Violent agreements. <laughs> well, that's cool. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, so in that case, I'll I'll proceed with that. I'll get a Google Docs circulated in time for the in time for the next meeting, um, and maybe we can spend some time at the next meeting um, to uh, to to review the template. Um, and then finally, the 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 last thing I had on the uh, on the agenda was um, the there is some logistics and. Uh, tidying up that we'd like to do on the repo. So um, we'd like to have, we'd like to update the repo uh, with things like the the list of projects um, that we're covering and their and their current status and their 
um, and their current um, uh, sort of uh, category, whether they're um, sandbox or incubation or graduation, um, and maybe put some links to the projects and that sort of thing as well to get to get some to get some publicity there and to cover um, projects that have recently been uh, introduced to the CNCF, like like Chabu FS and, and Longhorn, for example. Um, so uh, I'm I'm happy to do that, but if anybody else wants to volunteer to to do a PR to to add that list to the um, to the SIG repo, uh, I could do with some help, save on time. Alex, I'll take that up. I'll do it. Awesome. Thanks, Karen. Um, I'll just put that down. Um, okay, so uh, unless anybody has any uh, other agenda items, we've actually gone through a fairly large agenda in a record amount of time. So you can get uh, 25 minutes back. Uh, thank you. Hey, Saad, I went ahead and created the PR already and sent you an email. Perfect. I'll take a look at that. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. No problem. All right. Take care, everyone. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have yeah, a good, good day. Good to see you guys. See you all. Bye. All right. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.